This is the periodic table. The periodic table, which is composed of elements belonging to different categories. For example, in white, over here on the left corner, we have metals. Up here, in the upper right corner, in black, including hydrogen, we have non-metals. In between the two, in gray, we have metalloids. And here at the far end, in dark gray, we have noble gases. These elements all share similar chemical properties with others of their own type. What do I mean by properties? Here's what I mean. Start off with copper. Copper is a metal. As you can see, copper has the property that all metals have, that of luster, shininess. Metals are shiny. Metals are really, really shiny. Something else that metals do really well is they conduct electricity. This is a conductivity indicator. What we'll do is we'll take the metal, put it between the probes, and push the button. And you can see that it conducts electricity very nicely. Copper is an excellent conductor of electricity. That's why it's used for wires. Other properties of metals include the ability to be hammered or rolled into thin sheets. This is a piece of copper foil. Because you can pound copper flat into thin sheets, it's said to be malleable. It has the property of malleability. Also, you can roll it or stretch it out into a wire. That's called ductility. That's why they make wires out of metals, because you can roll metals out into long, thin wires. Ductile and malleable, both properties of metals. This stuff right here, this yellow stuff, is sulfur. Sulfur is a non-metal. It's a good representative solid phase non-metal. As you can see, it's not shiny like a metal. In fact, it's called dull. It's also in a powder form. If you try to hammer or roll out a non-metal solid, it's going to simply just crush into a powder. That's called brittle. Dull and brittle, as opposed to lustrous and malleable for a metal. Another fact about nonmetals is that they are not good electrical conductors. We'll take this conductivity probe and stick it into the copper and push our button. And you'll notice that none of the lights light up. Nonmetal atoms do not allow their electrons to freely move from atom to atom. Therefore, they can't be captured by the conductivity tester. Therefore, they don't conduct electricity very well. There are some exceptions to this. There are certain forms of carbon that conduct electricity quite well. But for the most part, nonmetals are very poor conductors of electricity. In between metals and nonmetals, we have metalloids. Except for aluminum and polonium, I like to think of it as alpo, dog food. The elements that touch the zigzag line that you'll find on your typical periodic table the elements that are on either side of that zigzag line, touching it on a flat, those are your metalloids. Again, except for aluminum and polonium, which are both considered to be metals. Metalloids, also known as semi-metals, share properties with both metals and non-metals. Like a metal, metalloids like this silicon are shiny. Ooh, shiny, shiny, shiny. On the other hand, if you try to bend them or hit them with a hammer, they'll shatter. This is very brittle. In fact, until today, this was all one piece, and I just touched it, and the thing just snapped in half. It's a very sad day. I've had this for many, many years. <laughs> My single piece of silicon is broken. It's so brittle, but shiny. So it's brittle like a non-metal, but shiny like a metal. What about electrical conductivity? Now, it would appear that it's not conducting electricity. But metalloids, given certain circumstances, sometimes they conduct and sometimes they don't. They're called semiconductors. Sometimes they conduct, sometimes they don't, which is why they make excellent transistor material. They can act as on-off switches. When they conduct, it's on. When they can't conduct, it's off. Off and on translates to zeros and ones of binary code, which is used in computers which is why metalloids like silicon 
are so handy in the computer industry. The final group are your noble gases, including helium, neon, argon, krypton, radon, and xenon. These elements do not chemically react with any other element for reasons we'll get into later in the year. It has to do with their stable electron configuration. Noble gases will not take part in compounds because they have no desire to form chemical bonds. So these noble gases are noble because they're too good to bond with other elements.